When A Quiet Place first premiered back in 2018, audiences were immediately thrown into a story of one family's struggle to survive in a time when humanity is on the verge of extinction from ferocious monsters that hunt by sound. The remnants of the human populace that managed to quickly adapt after the violent arrival of the alien predators try to adjust to their new normal, eking out an existence as quietly as possible in order to ensure their survival. In the first film, not many details were provided about the creatures themselves, the circumstances surrounding their arrival, or the motivation for their subsequent attack on everyone and anything making the slightest noise. Though its sequel provided more details about these monsters, there are still plenty of questions to be addressed in future installments. In this video, I'd like to discuss what we know so far about these strange creatures, and what mysteries have yet to be explored. The extraterrestrial nature of these beings was confirmed by co-writer and director John Krasinski upon the first film's release in April of 2018, when he appeared as a guest on the Empire podcast, saying, quote, They are absolutely aliens. They're from another planet. Where I developed the idea of them and what I wanted them to look like was most alien movies are about takeovers, agendas. They're a thinking alien creature. And for me, this idea of a predator, this idea of a parasite, this idea of something that is introduced into an ecosystem was interesting. This was a detail that was revealed early on regarding these aliens, that their arrival wasn't an invasion typical of the sci-fi genre. They didn't come in ships, but instead on meteorites that fell to the Earth. The fact that they survived such a trip is indicative of their indestructible nature. This particular aspect of their design and arrival was also confirmed by Krasinski, who continued in the interview saying, The other idea was the armor is also the reason why they were able to survive kind of the explosion of their planet and then survive on these meteorites, because they've evolved to be bulletproof. Until they open themselves up to be vulnerable, they're completely invulnerable. It certainly is intriguing that these aliens are in fact survivors of their own cataclysmic event and now act as a predator species introduced to a new environment, negatively disrupting the ecosystem. In regards to their physical attributes, these aliens, also referred to as death angels, are large quadrupeds using all four limbs for mobility. They appear somewhat humanoid, However, their forearms are overly long, and the creature's movements were intended to mimic how bats move when they run. They are extremely fast and strong, with razor-sharp teeth. Standing about 9 feet tall, they weigh roughly 400 pounds, as they are covered with an extremely tough and heavy armor-plated exoskeleton. Considering their armor was tough enough to withstand the destruction of their homeworld, the trip through space, and violent descent to Earth, it stands to reason that most conventional military tactics and armaments used to combat these hostile creatures were rendered useless. The most notable feature of these fearsome beasts is their hypersensitivity to sound. They are completely blind and rely solely on sound and echolocation to survey their surroundings and hunt their prey. The armored panels on their head open up so they can better determine where sounds are coming from. There is also another flap towards the back of their heads that they can open to reveal a massive ear canal, enhancing their hearing even further to enable them to detect even the most subtle changes in sound. Doing so, however, leaves their vulnerable, unarmored flesh exposed and open to attack. As Krasinski noted, until they open themselves up to be vulnerable, they're completely invulnerable. It's unclear how intelligent the aliens are, as their sole objective appears to be hunting prey, and they are not observed communicating with each other. However, they are definitely smart hunters, and even though communication between these creatures was not featured in the films, the artists who created the alien's signature sounds viewed them as highly intelligent and communicative. What has been observed is that when a creature has targeted their prey and is moving to attack, they emit a terrible shriek, alerting other angels nearby to its location so they can also move in to attack. 
Another detail regarding the aliens that was mentioned by the sound engineers in an interview with Inverse is that there's some sort of electromagnetic interference between anything electronic and these creatures. When they come into a room, the lights will flicker, or when they appear on the security monitor, they'll fritz. Their greatest strengths, under certain circumstances, can also be their greatest weaknesses when manipulated accordingly. Extremely high-frequency sounds will disorient, immobilize, and cause them physical pain. In this situation, they instinctively and uncontrollably open up their armored plates, revealing their vulnerable inner flesh, where conventional weapons can then be used to kill the creatures. And while their heavy outer armor protects them from the harshest of elements, it also weighs them down greatly, and in water deep enough, they are unable to swim and sink like a stone. As such, certain landmasses where the aliens haven't landed offer a measure of protection for any inhabitants. It is unknown how these creatures reproduce, and even how they sustain themselves, as they have not been observed eating. It appears that they do not hunt humans for food, as they immediately abandon their prey once they've silenced them permanently. This is one of the more intriguing mysteries of the Death Angels, which will most certainly be considered as the franchise moves forward. Until more is known about them, for now it appears their sole motivation for their predatory behavior is their own survival. Finding themselves in a completely new environment on Earth, they can only perceive the world around them by sound, and yet when sound itself can be weaponized against them, their single-minded desire to eliminate anything that could weaken and potentially wipe them out makes sense. Again, there is so little known about them, including how they reproduce. It is unclear if they are even able to do so in this drastically different environment. If they operate as a hive, that would beg the question of whether or not a queen of their species even made it to Earth. If not, it could be the case that the Death Angels that landed on the planet are the only ones that there will ever be. Certainly, the surviving humans will need answers to these questions as they try to stave off extermination. One of the reasons why I enjoy the Quiet Place franchise is the persistent aura of mystery. With the concentration on the Abbott family and their own story of survival, the aliens' origins and their initial arrival took a backseat to the characters' journeys. This served not only to facilitate good character development and a growing attachment to the protagonists, it also inspired the imagination, allowing for theory crafting and speculation on the part of the fans. As the universe expands, it will be interesting to learn more about these terrifying creatures and how humans can adjust and ultimately survive their cataclysmic arrival. But I'm curious to know what you think about these Death Angels. Do you have any theories about their origins or life cycle? What kinds of stories set in this universe would you like to see featured as the franchise moves forward? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed this video. Leave a like if you did and be sure to subscribe for more sci-fi and fantasy news and lore. Thank you all so much for your support and as always, have a very nerdy day.